Welcome to another video. This is what I recommend whenever you get the integrand being the square root of a quadratic function. You might find other ways to do this, but I recommend that you complete the squares. So the hardest task you're going to perform is completing the squares. And once you know how to do that, this becomes very easy for you. Now, should you do this if it was in the form of something over this, I would still recommend you do it, okay? Unless you can do a u-substitution, but we know a u-substitution wouldn't work here because we don't have something that represents the derivative of the quadratic. So, completing the squares is the way we have to go. Let's get into the video. So we're going to complete the squares this way. Remember, your focus should be on these two terms. Forget about this one. So what we have, maybe I should do the work here. Actually, let's do it here. We know that 5 minus 4x minus x squared. You can actually write this as 5 minus, you put everything together, you're going to end up with 4x plus x squared. So you, before you complete your squares, you want to make sure that the leading coefficient, which is the coefficient of this, is positive. Okay, That's the reason why factoring was a good idea. If it was already positive, I would just switch the positions and I'll complete the squares. But now I have achieved the positive thing that I'm trying to achieve, so I might have to rearrange this. Let me rewrite it as 5 minus x squared plus 4x. So with this, how, how do you complete squares? Well, you take half of this and then you square that half and then you add it. So what must be added to this to make it a perfect square? Well, it's going to be the square of half of b, which is just 4. So what I have done is I have added 4 to what's inside, but what I've done to the entire function is to subtract 4, because this is minus 4, actually. So, instead of you leaving it this way, you have to add back the 4 that you just subtracted. So we're going to be adding back our 4. You have to see it that way because of this. If this was a plus sign, then we'll be subtracting. But because this is a minus sign, it means we have subtracted 4, we have to add it back. If this was a plus sign, it means you've added 4, you have to subtract. So you have to see both of them like that. So that simply means what I have is 5. Oh, 5 plus 4 will become a 9. Okay, so let's write this as 9. And now we have a perfect square, which is x plus 2 squared. So I can go here and say this is equal to the integral of the square root of 9 minus x plus 2 squared. Why am I trying to? I'm trying to, okay, we write x plus 2 squared dx. Okay, my brain is already going to the next stage. Now, You're beginning to think trig substitution. I'm going to replace this with sine, but you have to be careful what you replace it with sine with. So before you start thinking of that, why don't you try to make this guy one? Okay, M make that your next mission. Make this guy one by factoring out nine from both. And remember when you use the word factoring, what you're doing is you're dividing each thing by whatever you're factoring out. So if I factor out nine from this expression, this is going to become 9 divided by 9, and this is going to become x plus 2 squared divided by 9. So what I'm, in, in essence, doing is I'm saying the integral of the square root. Now watch what happens. If I take out 9, what's going to be left here is 1, because it's 9 divided by 9 minus this divided by 9, which is x plus 2 squared divided by 9. Okay, that's what I have, dx. One more move. This is the same thing. You see, this square root of 9 is 3. I can pull it out here, so it becomes 3. I have the integral of the square root of 1 minus... I can write this as 3 squared instead of writing 9, right? And I can put the 2 together and just write x plus 2 
over 3 all squared. Now I can do my trig substitution because I just need to replace this with the appropriate trig function. So the question is, would it be sine or would it be cosine? If it is sine, nice. If it is cosine, nice. But it's easier to deal with sine because you wouldn't have to deal with the negative when you take the derivative, you know, when you do it for cosine. So that's why we always run towards sine. I like the sine. Let's get rid of this. So remember, we're going to make this some kind of sine. So we're going to replace this with sine. So let's say let x plus 2 over 3 be equal to sine theta. That means that um, well, we'll need to sketch a triangle. Actually, this works because usually once I do the substitution, I want to go hide the triangle in some corner so we can use it by the time we're done. So if the sine of something is x plus 2 over 3, it means we can have a right triangle. Let's do it here. So we have a right triangle. This is theta. Sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is 3. The opposite side is x plus 2, and we need to find the third side. Now, this is where you don't need to do any Pythagorean whatever, because the third side is always the question you start with. Okay? So don't bother yourself trying to do Pythagorean squaring. No, don't do that. Okay? Just write it there. It is the square root of 5 minus 4x minus x squared. That's what you're going to get if you choose to go on that journey. Okay. Now, let's go back here. So what we've got is um, this. Now we're gonna say that x plus two equals three sine theta, and then we can take the derivative of both sides. If we take the derivatives, what do we get? We get um, dx is gonna be here. We take the derivative of this is gonna be three cosine theta d theta. So we can replace dx with this. And that's what we're going to do. So it means our integral, let's write this as i. So we present our integral as 3 multiplied by the integral of the square root, watch this, of 1 minus sine squared theta. 1 minus sine squared theta. Remember, we've replaced all of this with sine theta. So this is sine squared theta, and we're going to be multiplying by dx, but we just claimed now that dx is 3 cosine d theta. 3 cosine theta d theta. I almost messed that up. Okay, so what do we have? We can pull this 3 back here, so we get 9 times the integral. Well, we know that 1 minus sine squared theta is cosine squared theta. Okay, and if we now take the square root of cosine squared theta, we're going to end up with the absolute value of cosine theta um, times cosine theta d theta. Now you're going to ask me why this? Well, every time you take the square root of any square, always choose the absolute value. So we now have to go tell ourselves, um, is, is it possible for cosine to be positive or negative or do we, we just say, okay, we're going to restrict it to where it is, where cosine is always positive. Okay, that's the only thing. So when you do your substitution, it is always essential to say, okay, what quadrants, because you know where you're going. So you go back and say, I'm just going to say it's in quadrant one. Just stay, stick to quadrant one. Just to be safe, always say that theta is in the first quadrant. That way, you don't have to explain why you did not put the absolute value, okay? Because sometimes you might get some tricky questions where they tell you that the theta you're using for your substitution is supposed to be in the third quadrant. Well, in the third quadrant, you know that tangent is what's positive. So here we go. We can easily say this is equal to 9 times the integral. So now this means that this is going to be cosine squared theta because this is going to be positive, okay, in the first quadrant. Okay, uh, maybe the order I wrote it is not the best, but that's it. This is all you need to integrate at this point. Do you know how to integrate this? Yes, 
How do you know it? Because every time you have a square, you have to use the double angle identity. And if you watch some of my videos in the past, I told you this is something you have to have memorized as a calculus student. So here, what do we have? We have nine times the integral. Remember, cosine squared theta d theta can be replaced with one half minus one half plus rather cosine two theta. every time. If this was sine squared theta, your sine will be, this is going to be a minus. But it's going to be the exact same thing, just with a minus. So now we just integrate. And in integrating, you see that both of them have one half. I can pull out the one half. So I have nine halves on the outside. So I equals nine over two. And then I have theta when I integrate 1, and if I integrate cosine 2 theta, it is going to be sine 2 theta divided by 2. Yes, so it's going to be plus sine 2 theta over 2. And then we're going to have our plus c coming out at the end of the day, but we're going to put the giant plus c when we're done. This basically is what we need to do, except that we don't have sine 2 theta. What we have is a double angle, but we only have theta. Where is it? We only have sine theta. So what would sine two theta be? Well, you have to use the trig identity. Sine two theta is two sine theta cosine theta. So we can rewrite this as nine over two theta plus two sine theta cosine theta divided by two. And what would that be? That would be 9 over 2 theta, this 2 cancels this, plus sine theta, cosine theta. If you want to get your theta back from the original relation, you, it's going to be the arc sine of this is going to be to release this. So we know that theta is equal to arc sine of x plus 2 over 3. That's what theta is. And we know what sine theta is. Sine theta is this guy, but we don't know what cosine theta is. Cosine theta is obtained from this triangle. That's why we made it in the first place. And you see what I did? The original problem always shows up at the end, and that's what you see. So its cosine is this over 3. So we can say that cosine theta is the square root of... 5 minus 4x minus x squared divided by 3. We have our i is now going to be equal to 9 over 2. And then you have a giant parenthesis. Our theta is going to be arc sine of x plus 2 over 3 plus. Now we have sine theta, which is x plus 2 over 3 x plus 2 over 3 times. So we have the square root of 5 minus 4x minus x squared over 3 plus c. So this is what you have. Um, but I know that this guy can, this 9 can cancel this 9. So we can actually write this as 9 halves of this plus 1 half of this. So our integral is going to be, I'm going to distribute the 9 halves. So I have 9 halves of inverse sine, 9 over 2 of arc sine of x plus 2 over 3 plus, if I distribute this 9 halves here, these two will cancel this, so it's just one half. So it's just going to be plus one half of x plus two times the square root of five minus four x minus x squared plus c. Never stop learning. Fills the stop learning. Stop living. Bye bye.